Experimental investigations are conducted to determine a cause and effect relationship between two things. And it's important that we design our experimental investigations correctly so that we can draw valid conclusions about these cause and effect relationships. We call each time the test is run during an experimental investigation a trial. So you can see that the first time we ran this investigation, we did it with three books. That is trial one. And then we did this investigation again with only two books. That was trial two. And the things that change between trials are called the variables. In an experimental investigation, the scientist changes one thing, and only one thing, and this is called the independent variable. You can see in trial one that there are three books, while in trial two there are only two books, and so that was changed. But it's important that you understand that the scientist is not investigating how the number of books affect the motion of the car. By adding or removing books, the scientist is affecting the height of the ramp. And so that is really what is being changed. And sometimes you'll have to look at what was actually changed and understand what that means. And in this case, adding and removing books means that we've changed the height of the ramp. And in this investigation, we can easily see that the scientist has changed the mass that is being pulled. And so that would be the independent variable, the one thing that the scientist changed. And in an experimental investigation, the scientist measures one thing, and that is called the dependent variable. And in this investigation, we can see that a ruler is being used, and rulers measure distance. So the scientist is measuring the distance the car rolls from the ramp. And in this investigation, the scientist is using a spring scale, and spring scales measure force. So force is what is being measured in this investigation. Everything else is kept the same, and these are called the constants, the things that are the same between trials. So I'm using the same car, the same ramps, the same rulers each time. Those are the constants. And in this investigation, I'm attached to the same sled here to make sure I'm dragging that across the table. I'm using the same spring scale, and it's important that the scientists would pull on this the same way each time. We change one thing, we measure one thing, but everything else is kept the same. Designing experimental investigations this way makes our results more trustworthy, and this helps us draw valid conclusions. So in this simple investigation, I changed one thing, which is the height of the ramp, and I measured one thing, which is how far the cars rolled from the ramp, and I kept everything else the same. So that makes me more confident in my conclusion that increasing the height of the ramp does make the car roll farther. So you may be shown an experimental investigation and then asked, what question was this designed to answer? To determine the question an experiment is designed to answer, just look at what was changed and what was measured. So here we changed the height of the ramp and we measured the distance that the car rolled. So this experiment must have been designed to answer the question, how does the height of the ramp affect the distance that the car rolls? This is also what the experiment was designed to determine. That's just another way of saying the same thing. So instead of a question, it's a statement. So this experiment was designed to determine how the height of the ramp will affect the distance the car rolls. So in order to determine what this experiment was designed to answer, I just look at what was changed, which was the mass, and I look at what was measured, which was the force. So this experiment must have been designed to answer the question, how does the mass of an object affect the force needed to pull it? Sometimes you may need to think about what a measurement or observation means. So in this simple investigation, I changed the material that was used to complete the circuit, and I observed whether or not each material caused the light bulb to glow. But this investigation wasn't really about which materials make the light bulbs glow, it was about which materials allow electricity to flow through the circuit. So I'm really investigating which materials are good conductors. That's what the observation means, and so that's what we mean by that statement. Sometimes you have to think about what the observation is really telling you. 
You may also need to look at an experiment and determine how it can be improved. Experiments need to be improved when the scientist changed more than one thing. Remember, you can only change one thing in an experiment. So this investigation was designed to answer the question, how does the mass of the ball affect the size of the crater made? So we should have changed the mass of the ball to answer that question, but you'll notice that they also changed what the ball was being dropped into, and that won't work. We change one thing, we measure one thing, we keep everything else the same. So I can't change more than one thing. So to improve this experiment, I would need to drop balls with different masses onto the same material, and that's how I would make it better. I hope this video has helped you understand how to design a simple experimental investigation. Keep up the great work, and I'll see you next time.